Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the importance of holding company and subsidiaries, or what I like to call baby LLCs. One of the things you've got to understand, right now, the biggest expense that you have in your life is taxes if you have a job. And by creating a holding company and deploying baby LLCs, you can begin to recapture some of your tax money so you can take your money and grow your wealth. If this is your first time here, I want you to go to the front of the channel and watch the older videos so you can begin to get your financial education and become financially literate. And also, I want you to take advantage of my 30 days to $2,500 course so you can create a side business. Here at Savage Finance, we employ and we advocate doing more to make more money. So this is to help you out in that regard. Let's talk about the corporate game. If you are an average person with the new Trump tax cuts, there are literally no deductions you can take. By literally creating a holding company and an operating company, you can begin to recapture so many lost tax dollars because this is, this is something that happened with one of my clients. I had a client who made a high income, about $350,000 a year, and he was like, you know, I'm just not motivated to start a side business. And he booked me for a consult because he's been thinking about it, and we had talked, and I said, well, if you start a company, you can start to get a lot of your money that you're throwing away in taxes back. So we go ahead, we set him up a holding company, an operating company, and then we set it up where he was able to get a tax refund of $50,000. This is the power of running a business. Like once again, if you're an average American and you're just out here living your life, working a job, you're getting hammered by taxes. Because if you start a company and then you, you gotta be in business for real, you know, just going ahead and creating a holding company and creating an LLC, that's not gonna help you. There needs to be money running through these companies. But this will enable you to employ and capture significant tax advantages that you, because I think the best setup is you have a couple who are, who are married who file jointly and one member has a business, another person has a job, and what they can literally do is offset those federal taxes paid off of that job. The biggest expense that you have as a person with a job is taxes. Taxes are knocking you upside the head. I mean, I want you to imagine, what would your life be like if you did not have to buy, pay taxes? What would your life be like if you didn't have to pay federal taxes? Because the thing is, it's gonna mitigate federal taxes. You're still gonna to have to pay your social security and your FICA and your state taxes, but to a degree, it would also impact those taxes as well. When you get into the business game and have the proper structure, there are so many things that can happen. I'm gonna give you an example of another situation with a client. And a client who had a business, really good cash flow, but their corporate structure wasn't set up and they did not have an established relationship with their bank. They had a checking account with their bank, but when they walked in the bank, no one said, hello, Mr. Turnbull. No one knew who he was at the bank. When I set up my banking, they knew who I was. Every time I walked in, hello, Mr. Cameron, hello, Mr. Cameron. And this is how you establish a relationship with the bank. So I worked with this client, we straightened out his corporate stuff, and I told him to go in his bank and make a loan. And he's like, but I don't need any money. I said, this is the perfect time for you to make a loan. So he goes into this bank, he sits down, the banker gets to know him, talks to him about his business. He makes a loan for $40,000. And I said, take that $40,000, put it in the bank and pay that loan back with their own money. And he said, that seems a little crazy. I said, this is how you establish banking relationships because the bank, Really, all the only thing the bank cares about, can you pay back the loan and can you manage money? 
That's the only thing they care about. They don't care about any of this other stuff. And he went ahead and he had the loan and he paid it back in two years. And then he's like, he called me up. He said, I just got an offer from my bank for a hundred thousand dollar loan. This is the type of stuff that happens when you know how to play the game. This is what happens because most people, they borrow money when they need it. And that is absolutely the worst time to borrow money. When you absolutely desperately need it, that's the worst time you're going to have such a hard time. So he was just like blown away. And that's like, like, well, you got your corporate paperwork and, and this is also something else. When he went in, because he was a business owner, he only had two checking accounts. He did not have the full corporate structure checking accounts that he needed. And he went in there and his banker was very impressed with him. And this is why as on the personal finance side, if, if you go below and hit the link and get my money management course, you will impress your banker. And also you may get some pushback because bankers are not used to people coming in and segmenting their money like that. They're, they're just completely unfamiliar with it because you know, most people's checking account is like a lunch pad. Money comes in, money pops out. That's how it is. One of the things with the holding company and operating company game is you begin to carve out certain advantages. I will give you an example. Like I have two luxury cars and one of my luxury cars is in my corporate name. And this is something, you know, if you're harassed by the police, if you, you know, at one point in my life, I was literally getting stopped every time I turn around. Then for the business purposes, I put the vehicle that I usually was driving, which was an E250 cargo van, I put it in the company name and all that stopped. It was amazing what happens when you go ahead and start to shift things out of your personal life into a corporate life. And this is, this is the only game that's out there because you can save money on your taxes, you could create freedoms for yourself, you could create opportunities for your family, you could like create a situation where you could literally hire your wife into your corporate situation, get a tax advantage for hiring your wife, put money in her pocket and save your company money. There, there's so many things that you can do. And this is why you need a holding company. Part of the game is, and I, I need to be fundamentally 100% honest with you, you need to create a holding company, an operating company, but you need to have corporate enterprises that make money. This doesn't work if you just go ahead and set up the holding company, the operating company, and you're, you're not out here making any money. So you need to channel money through these corporations. The other day, I had someone reach out to me on Facebook and he had some questions and he was just stunned that, you know, getting business credit, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, that the banks have gotten rid, because right now, after the last recession, unless you have a corporation or an LLC that's three to five years old with tax income statements, with taxes filed and income statements, they're gonna make you sign a PG for any type of liquid business credit, such as a Visa, MasterCard, or American Express. They're gonna check your personal credit to issue you those cards. However, a lot of people don't understand that the power of age, and once again, you gotta make some money. You gotta make some money through these things. Because let's say you are 20 years old and you start your holding company and you start operating company and you run whatever little endeavors that you have going through this company. And by the time you're 25, you have an established holding company with filed taxes, money going in it, the proper corporate checking accounts. You're in such an incredible position. You can do so many things because with the business credit tip, I used to have a neighbor, her name was Sally Mae Jones. Rest in peace, Miss Jones. She used to say this, if you live long enough, you're gonna get old. So whether you're actively building something right now or not, time is passing. And I want you to be building some stuff. I want you to get some stuff because you start at 20, by the time you're 25, you will be eligible for all types of business credit. And I'm talking about true business credit. I'm not talking about vendor credit. Vendor credit is like, say you have a dog collar business and you buy leather from this leather company. These companies will grant you a generous credit terms because you're getting leather. You're not getting cash, so why would you get leather unless you needed it? So they're pretty genuine, that's vendor credit. What I'm talking about is liquid capital. 
Visa, MasterCard, American Express, lines of credit, things you can get cash. You can set yourself up to be in a position where you could be available to get up to a million dollars in financing and funding. But it's all about knowing the corporate game. I had another client who listened to me who was an Amazon FBA seller and what we did was liberate them and they had an account at Chase and about 18 months in, Chase offered them a million dollar loan because of the way that their financials were set up and they saw the money coming in because what used to happen is, and this is gonna be so crazy, my client used to take all of the money out, cash money, and put it in a safe deposit box. And I said, you gotta stop doing that. You gotta leave the money in the bank. But why, I want my money, I want my money. I was like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta leave the money in the account. And then also the same client, we put her on salary from her company and it, it, it hurt because I was like, okay, you, you wanna live a, a generous lifestyle. You put yourself on salary, you're gonna pay a lot in taxes. But this is gonna enable you to get bigger and better things in the future. So she took the hit and you know, she went from just hustling and not paying any taxes to, oh my God. I mean, I think at one point she was paying like $20,000 a month in taxes because that's what she was paying herself. And she says, good Lord. But then when she went to start financing stuff and they ran her credit app and then they're like, oh, you got great credit. And they're like, oh, we like your income. She was able to get any and everything that she wanted. And she was just amazed that, because the, this, this is a system. We're in a financial system. And if you don't understand how the system works, it's not going to work for you. There's about $22 trillion of funding out there that most people cannot access because they don't know how and they're not properly structured to get this money. So this is what a holding company will do for you and this is what an LLC will do for you. And let me just be really, really express this, that you have to have a business that is making money. But it's just not gonna work for you. And there, there are many people who wanna go out and get these business credit products and don't want to be personal guarantor. And unless your corporation is seasoned and has age, it ain't gonna work. It's just not gonna work. This is what I had to tell the person who reached out to me on Facebook. It's like, it ain't gonna work. Because this is another thing for you business owners who depreciate and deduct everything. When you go to get a loan, they're gonna say no because you have formally informed the United States government, IRS, that you made no money. And they're gonna go with that. You ain't gonna get no loans or no products. I don't care if your business had revenues of $250,000. What they're gonna look at from a lending institution perspective is what you claimed and the money that you put in your pocket and the money that you pay taxes on. And it's a wicked, wicked game because right now I depreciate so much, but I'm not looking at, I'm not out here looking to buy anything or get into anything. And frankly, I have enough cash to do what I wanna do. So there's this corporate game is amazing with the proper knowledge and financial structure. And this is why you need a holding company and an operating company. And right now, this is the best time to do it because you give your time to grow it. Literally, you can have an eBay business, you can have an Amazon business. Like, I'll give you the example. Like, if I had an eBay business, an Amazon business, I would have a holding company, and I would have the Amazon business in Baby Corp number one, and I would have the eBay business in Baby Corp number two. I would segment it like that because it would require me to keep very good books because I would keep a record of all my eBay sales, I keep a record of all my Amazon sales, and then I get to the, take all the deductions and push them up through the parent company, which then in terms could save me a gang of money. There's so many things that I'm gonna talk about in the future that you could do with the holding company and the operating company. And you know we're gonna talk about whether you should have an LLC or whether you should have an incorporation. It really depends on what you're gonna do because here's the thing with the holding company and operating company. When you sit down and create a holding company, operating company, you become king. You can do whatever you want that doesn't break the law. You could create, you could write your articles of organization any way that you want. You can do so many things. You could set yourself up 
for greatness and it's just all about the paperwork and the structure. And this is a game that many folks don't know how to play. But once you start playing the corporate game, you're not going to want to go back to living a normal life. I will express to you what I do. Like since I use this house, it's really huge, it's 5,000 square feet. I use it mostly for YouTube. I mean, there's like, the, there's only one bedroom with a bed in there. There's two bedrooms with, with beds, because it's a four bedroom house. But two of the bedrooms are studios. In the basement area is studios. So I legitimately lose about 80% of this house for YouTube. So since I do that, I actually rent my house to my corporation. And you know, I, you know, and that's a, there, there are certain steps that you have to do because you just cannot like say you do it. There's a there's structure and you got to do it that way. And, and that's going to be about, cause I, I charge $5,000 a month. So that's a $60,000 deduction right there. Corporate game, if you understand the nuances of the corporate game, it's the best game that you can play. There's so many things that we were going to talk about. So if you want to learn how to play the corporate game, go below and get into my The Art of Holding course. It's expensive. It is not cheap because this knowledge can set you up to make millions. And go ahead, the link's below, and if you want to get into this corporate game and learn how to do it. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Go below, get 30 days to 2,500 is free. Get the mindset course, it's free. Get the money management course, you have to pay for that. And the holding company course, you have to pay for that. But I am here to tell you as a living witness, this is the best game on the planet. There's another video, you should check it out. There's another video right here. You should be checking that out right there.